All righty, and welcome to On the Bench with Big Jim. Looking forward to a good day today. Good morning, Zach. How's it going? Are you, You're back in Virginia Beach, aren't you? Uh, uh, all of my trips to Virginia Beach, I've, I've been there uh, twice, twice, have been great, great experiences, and uh, a lot of fun, um, great tournament, and um, I hope you enjoy yourself, I wish your wrestlers um, a bunch of uh, good luck, and that they wrestle hard. Um... Good morning, Spencer. Good morning, Earl. Good to see you all here. <coughs> um, uh, today's going to be a great day. Yesterday, the Mariners started the season with a win over Boston Red Sox, the defending world champions. Uh, the Gonzaga Bulldogs won their Sweet 16 game. And so, you know, things things going to be better <laughs> here in the Northwest. Uh, it's supposed to rain today. But uh, that's okay. It's supposed to be sunny tomorrow, so looking forward to that. We're going to have a great uh, show today. We have we have uh, uh, we have a special guest today, and um, <clears throat> his name is Spencer Kimbrough. <coughs> I'm sorry about that, but we're gonna we're gonna invite Spencer in. Uh, Spencer is. Uh, a member of the University of Alabama men's wheelchair basketball team, and uh, they won a national championship uh, two and a half weeks ago, I think it was. Hi. Welcome to the show, Spencer. How are you doing? Thank today? you. Good. So, uh, look, you, you've been sporting your national championship shirt, aren't you? Yep, yep. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> Threw it awesome, on just man. for this. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, let's, uh, let's start... Uh, Let's start at the beginning. Uh, you grew up, you, uh, you, you're a Mose Lake guy, and you're, you're yep. at the University of Alabama, but you're from this little town in central Washington, little, little old Moses Lake. And uh, you, I mean, you were a multiple state champion in track. Uh, I don't know how many medals. How many medals did you end up with in track? Uh, ten. Ten. ten state that's, titles, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And then you traveled the world with uh, – with uh, all of the different sports you participated in, give us an idea of how many different sports you played uh, uh, around the country and around the world. Um, so I started playing basketball. Um, I was more of a basketball guy at first. Uh, and I traveled the U.S. playing basketball with my team out of Spokane. Um, and then I started doing track. And that's where I like I made the U.S. team and traveled the world. I went, I've been over to Europe a couple times and the uh, Middle East, just competing. Um, and then I started playing a little bit of hockey over in Idaho, and that's that's a I really enjoy hockey. So, um, but we just play around Idaho. We don't travel very much for that team, but. Uh, and not yeah. much hockey in, in Alabama, is there? <laughs> no, no, not at all. No. Um, but uh, what? Uh, these opportunities have popped up and you've been able to uh, uh, take advantage of that. I met your dad over uh, uh, at the clinic the other day and uh, first time we'd ever met. Oh, really? And, and, yeah, and uh, now they were able to come back and, and uh, so w they came back and watched you play, which was a surprise, but they did come back and uh, go to the national championships, right? Yeah, yeah. So they, they, uh, I knew it was my parents were coming for the national championship in Illinois, but uh, my whole family surprised me. Oh, that's up, right. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah. That's yeah. It. You're holding your nephew. Uh, yeah. Is it your nephew? And <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're the face. Your face was just priceless in that <laughs> you, you were surprised and uh, uh, grateful to have such great support. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very cool. So um, let's let's go back to the beginning. You you were a you were a star athlete in in basketball and track in high school, and before your senior season in track, you end up committing to University of Alabama to play basketball, right? Yeah, yeah. And and, and so you decided just to focus on that. Mm -hmm. Track was 
pretty demanding because you ran all the sprints and uh, just uh, was there something you just wanted to focus on basketball? You pretty much uh, proven everything you, you could in track, so you just uh, decided to uh, focus on the basketball. Yeah, what was your decision there. Was... <clears throat> well, um, since track got so demanding for the last five years, I was doing it. Um, it was nonstop. Like we had no off season. Like we were constantly, <clears throat> if we weren't out on the track, we were on the rollers inside. Like it was just nonstop training. And, and, uh, and I had traveled the world. I made the U S team. So I got to sport the U S Jersey and stuff like that. And I was just, um, I just thought it was a, it was time to move on with something else, you know? So, uh, and that's cool. That's, uh, uh yeah. you know, I, I totally understand that. Um, so, uh, you're you're just a, and I hate to say this, but you're just a freshman uh, yeah. at, the, at the University of Alabama, and yep. uh, they were defending national champions. You guys mm-hmm. ended up being uh, twenty-seven and five on the season, but uh, you guys went in as second seed to this national championship. Tell us a little bit about uh, your your first semester, because that first semester as a freshman in college is always really important to get off on a good start as far as grades go. But yeah, t- tell us a little bit about your experience there, uh, especially the cultural change of coming from Central Washington down to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I mean, um, coming down here, it's it's way different than Washington. It's it, it was hot and muggy as soon as I got <laughs> down here. It's it's a lot harder to understand people because their accents. But um, <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, and getting into the basketball groove of things, it was just a ton of training, like way more than I was used to um, up in Washington with my team in Spokane. Um, we're we're doing three hours a day with just basketball and then weights on top of that. Um, we got our outside things that we have to do on our own, um, keeping up with school, you know, have a full schedule of classes and stuff like that. It was uh, – it was a lot to deal with, and especially playing, um, I was kind of thrown right into the fire, so I was starting. As soon as the season started, I was, I was thrown out on the court playing, playing the whole game, and it was tough, especially with them winning Nationals last year. Um, we kind of had that target on our back, and at the beginning of the season, we were missing a few key players, so uh, we ended up losing our home opener. And so that kind of it, – it really sucked. And uh, I don't know, just going through first semester was – it was tough. Um, but second semester was even tougher. Uh, so school, school-wise or the training? Both. Both. Um, yeah, and game-wise. Because, um, I mean, you get so far into the season, you start getting uptight. You know, you're, you're kind of tired of training so much and everybody's had, had, a t- had too much – of uh of basketball and uh it just <laughs> tensions rise you know so it was it was tough to work through that and uh and still stay number one uh we ended up losing a few a few games here at home that were key games so that's why uh it dropped us down to number two going into nationals but yeah so so uh now as a, as an overall men's and women's uh, team, you guys have won nine national championships within the last, uh, what was it, uh, you know, last 10 years. The women have won six national championships and the men have won three. Yep. Uh, does Coach Bertram feel like he Ford. has? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you guys call him Ford? <laughs> yeah. Um, does he – have a uh, is there extra pressure uh to you know to continue to to be dominant i mean i'm sure there is uh especially winning two back-to-back championships yeah um but i i mean i don't see it really affecting him at all he's just doing he's doing him he's working with us how he's always worked with us um so i think i think he's got that under control but i'd imagine there's major pressure to stay dominant especially at alabama because we're a sports dominant school so sure yeah i mean with the, you know the 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 legend of what's going on there with football 
um, yeah. you guys have been uh, uh, brings a lot of attention. Now, you were telling me uh, over the break that you guys are building some new facilities and uh, tell how's that going? Yeah, so um, well, we're trying to build new teams and stuff. So we started a wheelchair racing team. And uh, so that's taken off a little bit. We, I'm actually helping with the guys right now. Um, I'm just helping fix chairs and stuff. They haven't. I've thought about joining, but I'm not sure about that yet. Um, so right now, as it stands, I'm just helping them out. We went down to Mobile last weekend, and uh, they competed in a in a road race there. We have a a 5K going on tomorrow morning that they're going to be competing in. So, yeah, everything's everything's going good here. I mean. We're growing, getting bigger, which is good news. So, uh, uh, is there a tennis story? Yeah. Uh, so the tennis, yeah. our tennis team has won multiple national championships, also. Um, but I know, I know there was talk about wanting to get uh, their own facility, also, because right now it's more of a shared facility, and then they they like have to push over to the tennis courts. Um, but they're they're talking about wanting to build their own facility with their own tennis courts and stuff like that so that would be awesome uh that's a, that's an amazing the growth uh, do you guys have the the room to grow uh, as far as facility buildings and stuff like that i mean yeah i'm sure we do there's yeah i think so <laughs> that's cool so i i want i want you to to share with us uh because i've watched a couple of your games Mm -hmm. And you guys have some really tall players, and you just lop the ball up there into the middle, and you see this big guy <laughs> reach up and out and outreaches everybody, and then he just he just tosses it in. Uh, that's yeah. got to be an advantage. Tell us about um, tell us about your team. So those guys, those uh, taller dudes, are are they're actually they're from Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, in wheelchair basketball, we kind of we have a point system. So each player is uh, classified in a, in a point from 1.0 to a 4.5 based on their their disability and um, what they can do, like muscle wise, and what muscles they can use, what muscles they can't use. So um, and we can only play 14 points on the court at a time. So those big guys are going to be our 4.0s, 4.5s. You know, uh, they're the guys that are just missing, like, the lower half of their leg or something, something super minor. And then, um, and then they have those guys playing with, like, me and a couple of the other dudes on the team that are classed as a 1.0, which is the lowest class, like, because we can't – we don't have the balance. We don't have the core muscle. We can't use the core muscle, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we a lot of uh, a lot of our play our play style is get those big guys into the paint and just have them just toss it right up. It's yeah. funny because you see you see you toss it up in there and then the big tall guy gets it and then I see you turn and take off because yeah, you know yeah. you know that your guys are going to score and so you go back down to get to get in defense. But yeah. uh, pretty a pretty cool uh, situation. So you guys go to uh, Illinois, where they held the national championships. Mm -hmm. You guys were seeded second. Uh, was that uh, was that a good seed? Were you guys basically where you needed to be? Was it a good uh, bracket for you to be coming in second seed? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, like I said, going through the the first part of the season and towards the end there, where we were ranked number one it had a lot of pressure came with it and uh we had a big target on our back and then once we lost those key games back in back in march uh, or early early march late february here um it it kind of everybody everybody's mindset on alabama kind of switched so everybody was like oh you know they went from oh alabama is going to be in the national championship they're going to they're going to be dominant to, I don't know, can they do it, you know, like, so there was way less pressure for us going in and kind of more of an underdog type of thing, you know, so. Now, uh, the fact that you guys play the same team in the national championship game the last two years, did, you guys are pretty familiar with that team. Did you play them during the season? Um, we played them once in, in the fall semester at, at home in Whitewater. And then 
at their house, and and then we played them again here uh, in February, and that's one of the games we lost. So, so it was kind of hey, you know, they they got you twice this year. Uh, you guys played them home and home, but then you ha- end up uh, playing them in the national championship game, and really, you guys. Uh, I'm trying to look for the score right here. You guys beat them pretty good. Um, yeah. Yep. So uh, it was pretty decisive, and uh, the celebration, <laughs> and, and and you guys got to cut the nets down. That was awesome. Yeah. What yeah. a great what a great experience. Now, uh, being a freshman, uh, mm-hmm. you know, being re- let's go back to when you were recruited, mm-hmm. and sure. thinking about hey, joining this national because cha- you guys were defending national champions all year did did the experience of winning the national championship did it really kind of meet your expectations or what you thought it was going to feel like or uh you know tell us tell us a little bit about that personally what were you thinking going in uh hey we're going to be national championships again you guys had a good team uh did that all come to fruition yeah, I mean, I knew it was going to be a hard road, especially because they're such high, uh, such a high caliber team. So I knew coming in that it was going to be tough, tough to train and and play. And it was, um, but it it was way it was way harder than I could have ever imagined. I feel like, and uh, but but winning that national championship paid off so much. Like just the feeling that you're number one, the feeling of being a freshman coming in playing all year with the guys and and uh and winning that championship with the guys and for the guys that are leaving this year so um I think it it exceeded my expectations it, but th- w- was there ever a time uh during the season when when it was when it was tough you were think did you ever question did you ever like man yeah. I'm way in over my head did you ever feel that yeah, yeah, coming uh the end of my f- my first semester um getting towards winter break, I was having a tough time being so far away from home and and uh the amount of training we were doing, the amount of stress I was having on my body, I just there were times where I just wanted to be done with it and head back home, you know, and and just just not come back, but um you know, just talking to a lot of people around here, talking to our sports psych, talking to my family back at home. I'm glad I stayed. So, so a little homesickness, I hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's that's okay. Uh, you know that's a, I think that's a normal uh, thing that happens uh, yeah. when you're a freshman, especially when you're such a distance. I rem- and I, you know, I I was only in Pocatello, Idaho, but uh, because my friend and there's a correlation here and because. My freshman year in college football, we won a national championship. And, uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad you're able to share that, you know, uh, what, what, you know, when you were, when you were down, when you were questioning yourself, what, what was it that, uh, brought you out of that, that, uh, that, that mindset? Um, just kind of staying focused on the, on the end game here. Um, you know, I get my my degree paid for here. I play high caliber basketball. You know, uh, join a brotherhood with all these guys. I'll have lifelong friends now. And oh no, it's just uh, and just talking to my parents and them just telling me how proud they are of me and just just kind of I don't know. It, it makes it it makes it a lot less sucky, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. Um. And that that's that's so true, and and you have a place when you go to Australia, you have a place to stay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we've been talking about traveling have down you, there and, and uh, hanging out. Yeah. Now, um, I imagine that uh, those now are they part of the five seniors? Yeah. They, yeah. They were, so they were, those guys were seniors. Yeah. So three of the three of those seniors are from Australia. So. Yeah. So so. Uh, have I mean it's awfully early probably, but I would imagine that the coach is already starting recruiting. Yeah, so we we for sure have three guys coming in next season. Um, we're trying to get two more, so we're trying to get five guys coming back. Um, 
Yeah, we have we have a guy from Arizona, we have a guy from South Carolina, and a guy from Minnesota that are for sure coming. So it'll be interesting to plug those new pieces in and get back to work. So, um, uh, in in looking at that, uh, is he trying to replace the the same caliber of guy that you're losing, or uh, or, or is he just looking for the best? Uh, players that he can find um well we we're also we're looking for those like certain classification of players oh, that okay we're that's right yeah so that's also a thing we have to keep in mind but um not necessarily the same caliber i think he's looking more of like growth where if those guys can grow if those guys can become better players um, because we also have those guys that have been sitting out on the bench and, and it's their time to, it's their time to shine, you know? So I think he's looking more of who can grow to become good players like those guys that are leaving. That's cool. Um, some, something you just said a second ago, uh, I brought up a question that I didn't think of earlier. Um, what kind of, uh, uh, attendance, how d- d- does the... Does the the Roll Tide mascot? Does he come to the games? Do you guys have a bit? Is it a big? Do you guys have a big following around camp? I mean, you guys were defending national champions. Uh, you, you know, you've won several. Uh, uh, is there a is there a big? Uh, is it, you guys hyped up? I mean, I mean, you know, n- not as much as the football because you don't have a stadium to play in. But do you guys have a good following. Uh, from the student body and from the people in town? Um, I'd say, like, on our on our uh, less exciting games, um, <laughs> we have close to, like, 100 people show up maybe. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> but, like, when we have our big tournaments for, like, the college division tournaments where we have the number one, two, and three seeds coming in, uh, we had that place packed. So there was probably close to, I'd say, 400, 500 people that were there. And we had, like, the cheerleaders. We had Big Al, the mascot. Um, we had uh, a branch of the ROTC came out and and uh, and cheered us on, too. So that was pretty cool. But our, right now our arena can sit up to, I think it's 1,500 uh-huh. with the VIP up top. So, But we had we had the bleachers full for those tournaments. Um, it was pretty cool. It's fun to play against or play in front of. A crowd that big. I, that's so. that's that's pro uh, pro your team. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> now, because it's probably fresh in your mind because it's been a year that you were playing back when you were in high school. Uh, were the game? I mean, is there any comparison? Were you? Uh, did you have good competitive basketball games that actually helped prepare you for the level that you're playing now? Um, as far it, as the progression yeah I mean it's totally different basketball um, and and in the college division you have everybody that's playing is a star you know and in the when you're playing in the high school division in our, in our junior division it's it's like you'll play against teams that only have like one or two really good players and here in the college division it's like every everybody, everybody is a really good basketball player so and it's it's just totally different style play. It's yeah, it's it, nothing really prepared me for it, honestly. But but as far as the progression, it was the natural progression to go to the next level, and and yeah. But but you ended up going to the top of the next level. Yeah, as right. Far as team play, so uh, are are you are you predicting uh, a, a, another championship next year? Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely possible, um, you know, because the two uh, two out of those five starters that played in in the national championship, myself and another one of the freshmen, we're we're so young, like we got we got four more years. Um, we got guys coming off the bench that we play really well with. Uh, I think I think we have a chance of going to three, getting a three peat, man. Um, you know, because you look at all these other teams that are super high caliber just like us and they're also losing a ton of players so oh okay that it's just that's part of the equation too yeah exactly yeah so the whitewater team had a bunch of seniors as well yeah they're and their number one shooter the guy that was shooting all those three pointers and stuff he's he's leaving he's done now so (laughs) 
So we'll see how it looks next year. But oh, for them, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's good. So tell us about school. Tell us about uh, how what what are you studying and uh, how how's school going? Uh, good. It, it's going really good. I'm I'm, I'm kind of undecided, but I had to like declare a major. It's not official, official, but I declared um, public relations. My first semester went super well. Um, I ended with a 3.9 uh, GPA. This semester, it's a little tougher because we had to travel a lot more. I missed a, a lot more of school, um, but I'm doing, I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. So uh, when, when you tell your instructors uh, that you're, you're going on a basketball trip, uh, are they cool with that or – Oh yeah, I get the full support from any instructor that I talk to oh, about cool. basketball. Yeah, that's cool. I and, even have and, some of them come watch. Oh, that's great. Yeah, do you have support? Yeah. That that's good support. Uh, yeah, and the fact that you're a starter on the team that's just uh, that's that's pretty sweet, brother. <laughs> you gotta yeah. love that. So yeah, it's um, fun. What's uh what's coming up? Uh, what's what are the plans for this summer? Um. Is there, Nothing. Summer, is there a summer league or is it, what do you guys do? No, there's uh we're just right now we're just in spring practice. Um everybody will leave to go home for the summer. I'll just be hanging out, training on my own in Moses. Are you, are you gonna mm-hmm. come back to Moses Lake? Good. Yeah. hmm Yeah. So but nothing uh no big trips or no big basketball or No, I'll probably end up playing in Hoop Fest with a couple of my buddies that are from Washington, so uh, yeah, that's about it. How, how many times have you on. played? How many times have you played in Hoop Fest? Oh, this will probably be my sixth time. Cool. Sixth or uh, seventh, yeah. Are you a Gonzaga fan? Oh, of course. <laughs> and and big win yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to listen to that while I was working in my shed, but um, no, they uh, it was, they had a big lead. Uh, double digit lead and then they get down to four where you guys get where you get nervous yeah me and my roommate were switching through both ga- uh the tennessee game also because he's from tennessee oh, okay and so yeah both those games were just kind of they were <laughs> they were rough on us <laughs> um uh uh t- tell me this since you watched it i didn't watch it i listened to it and the announcers were killing the referee about yeah how bad the calls against Gonzaga, uh, how, how bad that was. Uh, would you agree? Was was the officiating uh, not very good yesterday? I mean, oh, they're, playing, yeah. they're playing Florida State, and Florida State beat them last year. And, you know, they're in Anaheim, so they're really you can't, you can't figure a, a home court advantage there. But it seemed, by listening to the announcers, they were calling everything for Florida State and nothing for Gonzaga. <sighs> Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, it was a a one sided game there. I feel like um, <laughs> they were just calling things that were just not even like they'd be calling shooting fouls when they wouldn't even touch them. And you could watch the replays and see that there was nothing. No, like they didn't touch them at all. I don't know. It referees are interesting in basketball, <laughs> especially in college basketball. I feel like so. Tell tell us a little bit about uh, your basketball. Uh, experience with the referees. What did you guys ever feel like? You guys were getting uh, getting hammered or getting homered? Oh yeah, of course. We, especially being like the number one and number two team. Like in uh, our first couple games of nationals, we were getting a ton of one sided calls. Uh, I almost fouled out both of the first games just because. Really? Yeah, just because really? like little things that they hadn't called all all season. They were calling. So I'd barely make contact with my chair or something and into another player, and I'd be getting called for it. And it so, drove me uh, crazy. <laughs> so if you ran your chair into another player, they, they'd call foul? Yeah, on a, in like a certain position. <coughs> like you uh-huh. can it's – a, it's a full contact sport, like with your chairs and stuff. <laughs> but there's like certain ways that you make contact that they'll call fouls on. So, uh-huh. but yeah. So did you foul out ever during the year? No, I I got close got, a got lot close, of the times. <laughs> yeah, got close, but never. Yeah, did. that's yeah. good because they 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 want you on the court. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, t- tell us a little bit about Tuscaloosa. Tell us, a, I mean, big town, isn't it? It's a big. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good sized town, and it's more of a it it's like three towns combined. 
So, um, but it's definitely a college town. When when they're like, I was down here last summer for for a couple of weeks, and when school's not in session, this town is dead. <laughs> uh huh. But then when like right now, I could go outside and be stuck on on the main road downtown for thirty minutes, just trying to go a mile, probably. Like it's ridiculous, but pack pack town. Yeah, uh, but uh, similar to like WSU, or uh, it's, it's got to be a bigger town than WSU. But um, yeah, but as far as traffic and stuff like that, when school's in, it's pretty pretty hectic, isn't it? Yeah, there's a ton of people here. <laughs> now, uh, tell uh, uh, in the SEC, how many SEC teams have uh, the wheelchair basketball teams? Um, right. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure right now. I know it's it's us and Auburn. Okay, and that's perfect because that's where I was going with this question. Uh, yeah, that's a huge, huge rivalry with football and basketball and the, and major sports. Is it a big rivalry with uh, with the wheelchair? Basketball? Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal for us too. Still, um, I mean, either like even though, let's say like we're ranked higher than Auburn um, and we know the outcome of the game most of the time but you can beat us any any day but uh, it, we still get a good amount of people to come out and watch our games and, and root and have that rivalry so it's pretty fun to be around. Well, that's a great rivalry yeah. right there. So, um, yeah. Now uh, turning the tables do you guys do much with the women's basketball team? They they won national championship as well, and uh, have won six national championship in recent years. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys ever play against each other? I mean, you, I, obviously, uh, you guys are in the same situation. Do you train? Uh, do you have training room uh, facilities in the same area? Um, ha- have you gotten to know the women? Yeah, I mean, well, like uh, a couple of us will hang out with uh, <coughs> with the girls team, and they'll they'll come hang out with us. Um, we don't really train much with them. The, I mean, they're using the same facility as we are, and and uh, things like that. But the only time we play against them is like in the off season. If if like say a couple of the girls want to get a scrimmage going on their own time, like they'll they'll hit some of us guys up, and and uh, that's the only time we'll play with them or practice with them or anything. But uh, they're very competitive. They they ended up having a, basically the same record that you guys – they were 24-5 uh, and five overall on the season. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, how many, uh, how many uh, girls are they going to be losing for next year? Um, I don't think they're losing any. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're losing any. Well, yeah. that's that's, uh, that's a good that's a good uh, problem to have for the coach. Um, yeah, exactly. To, ha- to have everybody returning from a national championship team was um, was were there games in the same place? Yeah. Yep. And so you guys were able to celebrate together, huh? Yeah. As soon as we won ours, uh, we went and took showers, got got all cleaned up, and then came back out and started rooting for our women. So. That's terrific that you, you yeah. guys were able to share that all together because, I mean, it's one big happy family. Both men's and women's teams win a national yeah. title. Uh, what what did the – I mean, the, did the boosters, did they take you out to dinner? Did, what, did the coach, what did the coach say? What, actually, that's a uh, – what, what did the coach tell you guys after the game? Just uh, just how much he, he was – how proud he was of us and – and uh, how he knew we were going to do it the whole time. He was just, he was ecstatic. He was, uh, he was just super happy. Uh, just, and then, but we also did, we, have, we had to get back on the bus and go 10 hours back down to, down to Tuscaloosa. So we didn't get, really get to do anything fun, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had to get back on the bus and go home. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but with uh you know with some nice hardware I the and cause in one of the pictures you're holding it up uh, yeah pretty pretty yeah. nice trophy and uh, yeah. pr- pretty cool thing uh one more thing before I, l- I let you go um 
tell us about the award, the game award that you guys, the coaches give a player, uh, the hammer. And what was it? A hammer or something? What is it? Oh, it's a, it's our crimson hammer. So it's the coach. It actually isn't giving it out. So it started with, uh, the player who had it last year at the beginning of the season who ended with the, the hammer last year. Then we, after every game, they get, the person who had the hammer last hands it off to somebody else that they oh, thought was like play, more of like hard. an MVP. Yeah, did played hard, uh, played better than they usually do. Like just little things. Um, like you know, even even guys on the bench can win it by just like communication, like being there supporting us the whole game, being loud. Just little things that we look for to hand it off. And how many times did you win it this year? Oh, I've had it six or seven times. Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's Yeah. Uh, and that just shows that uh you're doing things, the little things, uh giving effort that and you're taking care of what you can control, which is effort and 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 that uh never say die attitude that uh that's it can be infectious. It can you can you can in, in, inspire the other guys to uh to play great and uh and to give it their all. So that's pretty cool. Hey, yeah. uh, uh, this has been fun again. I really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. I know you have, you guys have a workout here here in a in a little while, don't you? Yeah, we have lit, uh, weights today. So, yeah. so what what do you got planned for the weekend? Um, well, I got to help out. Uh, I'm helping the guys tomorrow the on the track team with the 5K. Yeah, and then uh, I think a couple of us were talking about heading up to Atlanta to go watch a, the Atlanta and Bucks game. So, oh, cool! Yeah, awesome. so we'll see. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and how far is that? Uh, it's only three hours. Oh wow! I did, yep. I didn't realize that that was that. Like that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well, Spencer, this has been a lot of fun, and I yeah, appreciate you, you being me. being on the bench uh, with Big Jim, uh, the our mm -hmm. our new adventurer here. Um, I really do appreciate your time. Hey, yeah. you're making us proud back here in Moses Lake, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been an honor to get to know you and, and uh, have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. All righty, buddy. You take care, and uh, best of luck uh, in, in your weight training today, and uh, have a great weekend. Awesome. Thank you. You too. All right, man. We'll see you, bud. All right, All righty. All righty, folks. That's uh, our good friend, Spencer Kimbrough, <clears throat> who uh, joined us this morning from Tuscaloosa. It's amazing how uh, technology can work <laughs> can work for you. Um, I wanted to uh, thank my uh, my sponsor uh, Jay's Teriyaki, as they have uh, uh, been willing to um, roll tide. Is right, Dan. That's very good. Roll tide. That's a uh, it's so cool to have uh, Spencer down at the University of Alabama and uh, representing himself, his family, our community, and, uh, and uh, Roll Tide. Very cool. But anyway, Jay's Teriyaki is uh, uh, one of our sponsors here on, uh, on, the, on uh, the bench with Big Jim. And uh, if you'd like to get involved uh, with us, uh, please contact me here uh, on a, a post or you can email me my phone number is in the main post uh, you can contact me I would love to visit with you uh, about what we can do uh, uh, to help um, keep this broadcast going um, I hope you all have a great weekend next week I'm going to have uh, uh, some good friends of mine that started a wrestling camp here in uh, northwest uh, Washington called Center Circle Wrestling Camp. And then, <clears throat> so we're going to talk with them on Wednesday. On Friday, we are going to visit with, um, uh, tentatively with uh, Sheriff uh, Tom Jones uh, and also uh, a former uh, police officer, Juan Luetta. Um, yesterday, they had the services for uh, Deputy Ryan Thompson uh, from the Kittitas Sheriff's Department and uh, they had his services yesterday and uh, I wanted to talk with um, Sheriff Jones and Officer Luetta about what we can do as citizens for um, 
to create a better uh, relationship, a better situation with um, law enforcement. Uh, people need to respect uh, respect the badge, and and, uh, um, and we're going to see what we can visit about to make that a better situation. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we'll see what we can find out uh, to talk about on Monday. But uh, I want to wish. Uh, everybody, uh, the um, uh, Virginia Beach National Tournament is going on, uh, starting today. And uh, I want to wish all those competitors the best of luck. There's quite a few from here from Washington that are wrestling out there. And then also Beat the Streets uh, Wrestling uh, India is wrestling America t- t- today, the women. And uh, my, uh, my good friend Andy Cook. Uh, will be coaching the Indian team um, but uh, I hope you all have a great weekend uh, it was fun visiting with Spencer this morning I appreciate his time and I appreciate you guys watching uh, I want to wish you all the best uh, again uh, uh, go if you need a good meal and uh, you're looking to uh, take your family somewhere to, to get something to eat you can take it home uh, we ordered some and brought it home the other night. It was awesome. Their egg rolls are to die for. So go to Jay's Teriyaki, <clears throat> and you can, uh, uh, they can, uh, they can take care of everything that you, you want uh, on, uh, as far as a meal goes. Um, that's the best way uh, <laughs> to go down. Uh, or you can call them to get some orders at uh, Jay's Teriyaki, 764 Fifty-one, fifty-five, or you can get <clears throat> their uh, their app, their food app, and uh, you can uh, uh, have a nice meal uh, there at. Um, oh, I did that again. Anyway, go to Jay's Terry. I can get you some good food. Uh, great guys down there. A great service and great food uh, for a great price. Again, thank you everybody for watching today. I appreciate it. This is Big Jim. I'm Jim Nielsen. You've been watching uh, On the Bench with Big Jim and look forward to the next time we visit. So take care everybody and have a great weekend.